Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. In this podcast, we're going to explore seven reasons why you as a coach, consultant, or small business owner are not generating sales in your business. Now, I know that you know your product inside out, you have the best value on the marketplace, but sales does seem not to be coming through. And I know that the goal of every coach, consultant, or small business owner is to generate sales with their business. And I assume that's the reason why you, um, you know, listen to our podcast or watch our content. And I assume your goal is to actually achieve a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And that's why I'm here too, so that we can help you start, scale and grow a business that is actually profitable and enjoyable. But how do we achieve this goal? What is it that you should do in order to scale and grow your coaching or consulting business? What do you need? You know, I think above all else, you should actually stop telling and start selling. And you need to be very customer focused and have dialogues with your clients that actually close sales. You know, at the end of the day, what we are doing as small to medium businesses is we are worshipping our prospects so much that when it comes to actually asking for the sale or asking for the money, we tend to hope that they're just going to roll over and end up in our, um, you know, in, in, you know, you know, paying our invoices or something like that. If you really want to earn your customer's interest, you need to sell to them, all right? You need to stop telling the customer about your product or your service. Go beyond that customer service and customer focus and start a true customer dialogue because people are out there wanting to buy stuff. They are looking to buy what it is that we're selling, but half of the time we're not actually closing these sales. You know, you need to actually have a sales process that you take people through so that they get to know, like, and trust you in that way. You understand your customer's personal and business needs, and then you actually position your message so that it is important to your customer for them to make a decision. All right. I want you to actually start listening to your customers and put them first because they're always giving you buying signals. But I don't think we're attentive enough because we're just afraid that um, we might be rejected or we might actually be, you know, you know, they might just walk away. You know, you actually have to do certain things to win your client's trust and offer so much value that it's so easy for you to then turn around and say, hey, now that you know what you know, Mr. Prospect, let us um, implement this in your business. Because knowing how to close a sale is critical to a coach or a consultant or a small business owner um, because half of the people in this industry are way too um, money-fearing and not money-conscious enough that they are just hoping that whatever solution or transformation that they're going to be giving their customers is just going to cut it. It doesn't work like that because you being on social media, reaching out to all those people on your Twitter or Instagram, it might sound impressive. You might have a thousand followers, you know, you might have 500 people in your group, but if all those 300 people are not buying from you or they're not possible buyers then you are absolutely wasting everyone's time because what people are seeking is solutions to their problems. You know, just yesterday, I kid you not, I was on a call with a consultant 
and um, you know we were just talking, and he was saying he's having a really hard time closing the sale. You know, and he's like, I recently started a um, transformation business where I'm selling consulting training and information and packaging that with my expertise. And I've reached out to about 300 people in my network. Many are interested, but not, uh, you know, but for some of them, it's not the right time. Or if I follow up, they never respond. You know, and then he says we've got a return of investment data on this program or this whatever new solution that he has. And it's very effective and it it, it, it increases people's focus, productivity, reduction of stress, et cetera, et cetera. How do I close the deal? How do I make people understand that what I have is important? And I asked him one thing. Have you actually identified your target market? Do they actually know what it is that you're selling to them? Because at the end of the day, the best marketer wins every time. You know, some companies or coaches or consultants, they focus on creating the best product. But before you have to think about, um, you know, this customer acquisition or getting clients, you know, or whatever tool that you are going to be selling out there, people don't know how good you are until they become your client. And that's where marketing and sales comes in. So in order for people to know your business and how excellent you are, you literally have to actually be closing the sale every time that you um, speak to people. I'm not sitting here and, and, and telling you that you have to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, guilting people into wanting to do business with you. But the more sales you close, the more ambassadors you have out there that are, you know, talking about your business, the bigger the community um, of people that can market for you, you know, and grow your brand uh, increases, you know. So there's a mul there are multiple reasons why you know, sales don't close half of the time. And it can be particularly frustrating if you've put in the work and you feel like you're working extra hard and, and you really believe in what you offer and you still can't land that customer. You know, while I mostly write about marketing strategies and, you know, how to actually build, you know, that following and to identify your target market, et cetera, et cetera. Today, I really want to be talking about the actual thing that brings money into our pockets. Because knowing how to close a sale is critical to coaches, consultants, and small business owners. Um, you know, and you don't have to sacrifice your time and offer to uh, wash people's cars just so that they can be your client. And in this podcast, there's seven reasons why maybe you're not generating sales, and I'll be giving you remedies on how to actually, um, you know, earn more money with less struggle. The first thing, I'm guilty of this. You are probably just over marketing and not actually selling. You know, when you reach out to your network or you reach out to people that you know and, um, you know, you, you, you want to have a chat with them and maybe, you know, explore your synergies. Is that a sales call or is that a marketing call? Because when your contact or somebody in your social media has expressed the, a need or an interest for whatever it is that you're selling, and you actually get to an opportunity to discuss your offer in a consultation, maybe you offer your pricing and you want to give them the next steps or other ways to move forward. Are you actually doing that in all the calls or in all the connections that you're having with your people? Because if your networking meeting that you just have is just to introduce what you offer and maybe to just reconnect and share synergies, that was a marketing call. You were not selling there. So a lot of coaches, consultants, and small business owners are busy on social media. They're tweaking their websites. They're tweeting. They're writing blogs. They're doing Facebook lives, catching up over virtual coffees, you know, all of which is great for marketing and may lead to sales eventually. But these activities aren't generating any sales. And you know what the fix is? Assess all your meetings that you've had up until today and be honest. Be very honest about which ones were marketing and which ones were sales calls. All right. And then make sure that you're actually pitching for more money than your desired revenue target because you will not close all of those sales. And if you typically lend 
a sale every third time or every third call, okay? And maybe you want to hit $100,000 in revenues. Then you have to pitch maybe $300,000 in deals, you know? And then you start, um, you know, then you can obviously get down to the 100000 that you are after. So do three times as much of the selling if you know, um, you know, one in every three is your close rate, okay? And then the second thing that maybe is causing you not to actually have sales within the business is because you're targeting the wrong buyer. Are you actually reaching out to the right kind of people with the right kind of pain with the exact product and the actual payoff? Because let's let's just keep 300 as the number that we're going to be using in this podcast here. So let's say you reach out to 300 people. And obviously it sounds impressive. But are all these 300 people possible buyers for what you sell? Are they willing and able to buy your transformation, your coaching, your training, your information or your expertise? Are they willing and able to hire you for a speaking gig or to do virtual events where you can actually showcase your product? Now, in case of, say, maybe you've got a training business or a coaching business, you may be better off really, you know, going after, um, you know, 30 people who are all HR professionals or business managers who actually need the type of training that, that you're offering to your staff. Okay, and, and be sure that you're talking to someone who is not a buyer. I mean, who is the actual buyer and, and somebody who is not just a gatekeeper? Because if the person who makes the decision is a person that you're talking to, then at least you know that the decision that you're getting is the right one. Okay, so what's the fix to you targeting the wrong buyer or the wrong target audience, um, you know, with your... With your marketing, because or with your sales, because people don't buy mark, um, things that are not directed at them. And what's the fix? You want to review your contact list, your groups, your email lists, and everything else, and make sure that you're prioritizing people with a need and an interest of what it is that you're offering. And in this contact list, you want to make sure that you're truly using a sales pipeline so that people can see their buyer's journey as they go along. And the people that are in there, you constantly are checking in on them to see if they're still um, of the same mindset that they might eventually buy from you, um, you know, eventually. Because you can't go from 200K to 2 million dealing with people that are just browsing. You need people that actually pay you. You need people that help you with your marketing. You need people that understand the product that you're offering. And you need people that need the payoff or transformation that you are offering and and, and giving out there. So if you're dealing with corporates or if you're dealing with, um, you know, um, um, you know, larger commercial companies, you want to make sure that the person who is in your email list or the person who is in your groups is the decision maker. Because half of the time we spend time, money, and effort trying to schmooze the secretary who is not even advocating for our work in the boardroom when they're asked, um, you know, for an opinion. You know, when you whittle down your list and you really look at the people who need and have got an interest in what you've got to offer, this gets you a little bit closer to the sale, but it's still not sufficient. Okay, are the people that you're targeting able to actually make the decision? Do they have or hold the reins to the wallets in the business? Are they also willing and able to push the purchase button? Because maybe your your close friend in HR does the training or is the one that organizes people to go on boot camps, but Is this colleague the one who authorizes the money to hire a trainer or a coach within the business? You know, that could be somebody who's more senior to him who makes those actual decisions. So make sure that your HR friend is not just taking you for a ride because they don't want to hurt your feelings. And make sure that you ask them, hey, if this has to go through, are you the person that I need to be talking to uh, when it comes to invoicing? Just test them. You know, you need to get the actual decision maker. That's the guy you take out for golf. That's the guy you buy the whiskeys, not Sally, who is just enjoying, you know, the perks of being in the right place at the right time and they're not doing anything for you. 
And you know what the fix for this is? When you have an interested prospect, you know, just confirm what else needs to happen for the purchase decision to start happening, you know, and then find out if your contact, you know, um, is going to need to consult anyone else. Oh, does your, concert, uh, your, your contact have a budget authority? Once you ask these questions, then the truth will come out, you know, because you might spend all your time chasing um, water, a waterfall, you know, and, you know, you, you, you broadly go nowhere, all right? And also, once you have that person who is the decision maker, find out if they are able to press play right now. Is there urgency for them to actually make a purchase of whatever transformation that you're selling? Because you may connect with an interested prospect. They might be happy and they're really engaged and, you know, they love your inspiration and everything else. But is he or she, you know, in the position to make a purchase right now? Do they have the budget to buy right now? Or do they have other priorities? Because if, if you would notice, right now we're just coming from a very difficult, um, you know, position in, 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 in the economy. And a lot of people are focusing on just getting their um, workers back to work. All right. So maybe your transformation or your coaching might not be a priority right now if they don't have employees to to pass that on to all right so you want to make sure the budget the time and the attention are all um timely and also know that the budget time and attention are limited resource so for you to close a sale your offer needs to be a priority right here right now okay not something that people are going to need in the next two to three months or something like that it might just fall through the cracks so what is the fix for this? Just make sure that during the sales process, make sure you're confirming deadlines and whatever constraints your prospects might be facing. You know, remind them that not only is the value that you're offering critical for now, but you want to build agency in how you're actually making your offer. All right. Maybe tell them you only can take three people at any given moment. And if they miss out, then they would have to wait. And then, you know, just look at what their priorities are at the moment and make sure you always have those answers. Because if people say, yeah, OK, we'll get back to you when Christmas in 2036. I don't think so. All right. Also, one other thing that makes it so hard for us to break into uh, many businesses is there's a saying and there's a statement that. You will never get fired if you buy from Telstra or from IBM. The reason is being, is your business credible enough, right? Have you got enough content out there for um, whoever is in HR to stand for you in a boardroom and defend your case? Or are there better alternative businesses out there that are also vying for that budget that you're after? You know, so your, your prospect may need um, to see all that credibility or your prospect may need um, what your business is offering right now. I mean, no doubt, but she or he has choices in how they can fill that need. You know, the other businesses will probably do what you do right now or are offering it cheaper, better, faster. You know, or the customer or maybe the organization might try to fill that need themselves um, based on what they've watched in a YouTube video, you know, or they, the company might just, um, you know, outsource it to somebody who can, um, you know, create videos for them or something like that. So how do you fix this? Remember that your prospects have choices. You are not the only choice that is being presented to them at any given moment. So their choice is to do, um, you know, either to go with another company or there's one choice that we almost forget all the time, which is inertia. The choice to do nothing. So that's where you remember I spoke about urgency at, at, at the top there, the above point there. There are also choices to do it themselves or to pick somebody who can do it cheaper, better, faster. So have you not only sold your offering, but also, have you sold yourself as a unique provider of choice? What have you got out there that vouches for you when you're not in the room 
that now happens to be your brand. Do you have people that can speak on your behalf when you're not in a room because of your track record? All right. So just make it easy for people to do business with you. And one of the things that might happen and why people don't buy is maybe there's no reason to switch. Did you actually do a needs analysis, um, you know, with your customers before you went into pitch? Because it can be even harder to close a deal when your prospect already has an alternative, you know, maybe waiting on the wings or they already have something which is working, but your offer is not enticing them enough to want to switch over to you. So let's say it's a training or it's a software or it's a system that you're using in your business. You find that company companies already have other trainers. They already have other processes. They already have other things going on for them. Why should they switch to what you are offering? And especially if you are unknown. I think there's a statement that says, you know, the, 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 the devil that is known is better um, than the one unknown. And how do you fix this? Okay. See, it's a different sale when your prospect is, is, is an experienced buyer or they already have this product and you're asking them to switch. So you know what that means? They've already done their research. They already bought in the past. They are a customer of this product already or whatever service or this coaching or training that you're offering. Now you need to make it easy and risk free for them to switch to you. That's where a lot of guarantees come in. That's where a lot of implementation and hand-holding, whatever you can do to sweeten the deal. Half of the time, we are always just trying to sell our products, but we're not showing customers that we are the best alternative that they need in order for them to be, do, and have a business that's profitable on their end using our products or services. So you need to outline, you know, ideally that it's going to be as painless as possible. What steps are they going to take and what are the initial steps that they need to do? Or give them a, a, some sort of a, um, um, a start or a free trial or something of that nature. And it could mean offering a guarantee or a discount that they can get when they switch to you. And this is when you actually start looking at how... Um, you know, you are actually providing this service. So have you considered and actually use the product yourself so you can inform the customer what their next logical step would be from when you uh, close the deal? All right. So last but not least, we're going to be looking at the timing and maybe just putting everything, um, you know, together there. All right. Because the timing or the circumstances might not be right or perfect for our customers. So we need to be constantly giving them information because maybe the reason they're not switching is they don't know us well enough or they don't we haven't given them enough of a guarantee um that will make them want to switch and let's say you do everything right let's say you 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 presented yourself well you immaculate you're professional and you you're showing them that there's not going to be any uh, friction in working with you and you're actively asking for the sales and you're actively asking the questions, you know, all the needs based analysis and you're not marketing to them. You literally just showing them that, yes, I'm here to help and let's get things started. And you've targeted the right buyer and you've got the actual person who makes the decisions and you know, you make a case for buying and, and now Buying is the only thing that needs to happen. Is the only activity that needs to happen. You know what? Prospects may still say no if it's not the right time for them. You know, there are other projects that they're just launching or there's political situations happening that might, you know, ruin their time or they're going through some other publicity nightmare which needs to be sorted out. You know, if it's, the, if it's not the right time for them, e.g. maybe... They just launched something new that they want to oversee or if the circumstances have changed since you last spoke. Maybe their revenue has gone down or some budgets have been frozen or people have been, um, you know, transferred or some people have left their jobs. There's a fix to that. Sometimes a no can be turned around and, you know, your best move is to stay in touch, follow up regularly. So you're in front and mind. And, and when the timing and the circumstances are right, you know, they will know the person that helped them out with um, information and content.
Okay, so one thing is, are you actually settling back to prospects that have actually said no to you in the past? Because maybe they could have said no based on the re reasons that I gave you um, up front. Are you keeping in touch with people who don't take um, a sales meeting before or might not be ready now? You know, just keep in mind that the seven, um, you know, principles that I just mentioned in this podcast, they're all the reasons why a sales process may break down. You know, despite your best foot forward, your best sales effort, however, you still need to confirm that you have a good offering, you have good uh, command in selling, and is your offer a good one? i.e. is it fairly priced, is it helpful features, has it got clear and helpful benefits, do you know how to actually sell and are you confident, articulate and persuasive? So half of the time it might not be the customer's fault, it might actually be our fault and I want you to actually start growing your business and if you're already making a, above 200000 and you want to go up to the $2 million mark within the next two years, I want to invite you to schedule a free consultation with me because you don't need to sacrifice your income to do what you love. You can actually have both. Allow me to walk you through our simple step-by-step -step plan and show you exactly how easy it can be because, like I said, sometimes, yes, we can do all the marketing we can, but if we're not actually selling... And if we don't quite know how to close a sale, it can actually be the, you know, the critical thing that um, keeps us in business or not. You know, how would it feel if you actually have to turn away business just because you've got too many customers that want to buy from you and you're closing those sales as they come through? Yeah, I want to see you having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And guess what? You too can have that. I just want that if you're the person that has the right process, the right product, and the right payoff, I want you to actually have a great living and do work that you love. So reach out in the comment section of this podcast. There's a link um, that would help you to schedule a call with me. Be sure to click that link. Let's have a chat and then let's see how you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.